Subconjunctival hemorrhage, you know what kind of history the patient is going to give it to you. Patient is going to say it's a red eye. So red eye, our main important differential is going to be your angle closure glaucoma as well. So red eye that is triggered by the coughing, triggered by sneezing. So sometimes what happens is patient woke up in the morning, right? And they just had a bad cough or um, they, they were just uh, like sneezing, sometimes putting just uh, water in the in the eye. And when they see themselves in the mirror, what they see is uh, they have got that red eye, maybe in one. So it's subconjectival hemorrhage. Is it painful? Not really. It's red eye and uh, can have discomfort, actually. Other symptoms, they don't have just a bit of sensation, like um, discomfort sensation, right? <clears throat> Uh, that's what we need to uh, check. So red eye that is triggered by sneezing, that's triggered by cough, for example, right? So what are the differentials that you need to see? What are the differentials that you need to check here? So it's red eye. So first differential is going to be your uh, uh, acute angle glaucoma because a red eye is there. So you need to ask if we have got eye pain, if we have got pain at the back of the eye, if we have got color halos around the light or not. So this is something that you need to check. So that is going to be your important red flag. Okay, so do not miss that one. Now the red eye, red eye could be in other things as well. And as I said, subconjectal hemorrhage, it's not saying eye pain. They usually have eye discomfort. So for example, conjunctivitis, that can be ruled out as well. Just say any watering of the eye, gritty sensation, itchiness. So that will be a bit, uh, uh, I mean, that's going to be easy for you to rule out, right? Scleritis again, scleritis or keratitis. I don't think so. It's going to be much more near to the subconjunctal hemorrhage because scleritis or uh, keratitis, they'll have severe eye pain, right? Severe eye pain. So these are the differentials. Make sure we rule it out. Now, what are the things in terms of past medical history or risk factor that you need to take into consideration? Diabetes, high blood pressure. Uh, you need to look for uh, smoking, alcohol, blood thinners, contact lens use, for example. These are the things that you can see because, because of contact lens, of course, patient is going to prone for uh, keratitis, for conjunctivitis as well. But because of contact lenses also, there might be uh, this, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, subconjunctival hemorrhage as well. So this is going to be uh, really, really uh, important. So don't miss that out. Yeah. Uh, subconjunctal hemorrhage, you know, what you need to do is a normal eye examination, nothing else you have to check actually. Uh, what is subconjunctal hemorrhage? It is caused by a small bleeding behind the covering of the eye, subconjunctival hemorrhage. Nothing to worry, what you need to do is reassurance, 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 right? But the thing is, you know, whenever they are giving us these kind of scenario where you have to do complete reassurance, they want you to know what are the reasons and when you need to uh, be alarmed. What are the warning signs in these patients? First of all, do symptomatic treatment because what is the presenting complaint? Red eye or discomfort or itchiness in the eye. So what you do is lubricant eye drops. That's uh, something that you need to do. Specific treatment as cold compresses, that's going to be uh, done. Uh, it resolves in one, two weeks. Patient might ask you how long it's going to take to get better. So it may take a few days or a week or two. Reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. But what is going to be the warning sign? Now listen to it very carefully. If the patient is having vision loss, any severe eye pain, it's a red flag. If your patient is having subconjunctal hemorrhage only in one eye, that is a big risk factor. Uh, not sorry, if the subconjunctal hemorrhage is in only one eye, nothing to worry. But if it is in both the eyes, it is a matter of worry. If the patient has got subconjunctal hemorrhage in both the eyes, it's a red flag. Make sure, tell the patient to go to the hospital straight away. It could be a sign of uh, uh, stroke as well. If your patient is on any kind of blood thinners, if patient is taking like long term of NSAIDs as well, and then patient is having this subconjunctal hemorrhage, it is a red flag. It is a red flag. So do not miss these red flags in subconjunctal hemorrhage. It is in one eye. Patient is not taking any blood thinners. Reassurance, reassurance, reassurance. But tell the patient if you've got it in both eyes, it's not getting better. It's been two weeks time. Uh, so just, just make sure you go to the hospital. That is really important, right? Again, in IPS, uh, same thing. Ice, ice, ice is your biggest friend. I don't know how much time, how many times I'm going to 
uh, stress on this ice because ice is the most, most, most important thing, right? Chuck and check, summarize before you give the diagnosis will be quite helpful. Keep acknowledge. Patient is going to ask you, when will I get better? Tell the patient, I can see you're really concerned when you, somebody see the red eye, they get alarmed. But the thing is, uh, from the assessment, what you found out, you have got this small bleed behind the covering of your eye. We say it is as subconjunctal hemorrhage and it is in one eye, so you don't need to worry. It's going to subside on its own. It might take a week or two. And I know you have got this discomfort. I'm going to give you some uh, lubricant eye drops. You'll feel much better, so you don't need to worry about it. However, if you got severe eye pain, your vision is getting worse, you feel it's happening in both the eyes, it's a red flag. So make sure you go to the hospital, right? So this is something that you need to do. Always make sure positive body language, signposting, of course, very important. Active listening, that's important. And obviously offer leaflets as well, because uh, uh, you can offer leaflets or you can even offer some links as well, right? So uh, some links which a patient can, uh, where the information is written in the patient's language, right? So there are online information leaflets as well that we can give it to the patient. Right, so that's your subconjunctival hemorrhage. All right.